Okay, good morning to all of our guests present here today, and a good afternoon to our friends visiting us via this webinar internationally. My name is Richard Jacobs, and I am the International Sales Manager for BISCO, and your host for this webinar, and I will be assisted by Ms. Maggie Mochica. So it is my distinct pleasure to introduce to you today a very special guest presenter, Dr. Michael Morgan, whose topic will be on anterior direct composite, simplifying class four, class five, and composite veneers. A little bit about my, uh, Dr. Morgan. Upon graduating from dental school, Dr. Morgan embraced the field of direct composite restorations and aesthetic dentistry. Studying in Switzerland under the tutelage of the world's most skilled dental artists, Dr. Morgan began developing the comprehensive, cutting-edge philosophy that guides his work today. As an author, Dr. Morgan has been published in the Journal of the American Dental Association, Practical Periodontics and Aesthetic Dentistry, Contemporary Aesthetics and Restorative Practice, and the Journal of Cosmetic Dentistry, among others. Dr. Morgan has lectured to audiences all over the world, and his passion for his practice is matched only by his commitment to assisting other dental health professionals, like such as yourselves, in discovering new products and practical techniques in order to attain exceptional, replicable results. And that is why we are here today, isn't it? To learn from one of the best. Before I begin one, one, one last note, uh, I would like to ask that uh, your questions be typed in the area designated Q and, Q and A on your screen during the telecast, uh, during the telecast, and Dr. Morgan will answer them at the end and in the order that they are presented. If you wish to download his course description for maybe possible future lectures, you can do so by visiting Dr. Morgan's amazing website, and I would recommend you to visit that at smilesbymorgan.com. That's smilesbymorgan.com. So it is with great pleasure that I now present to you Dr. Michael Morgan. Doc? Thanks, Richard. My pleasure, sir. Good morning, everyone from across the world, wherever you are. Thank you for joining us today. Um, if you joined us last time, we talked about posterior direct composite. Today, we're going to switch focus a little bit to the anterior and kind of give that part of dentistry a little equal billing here. So. Um, in the United States and in other parts of the world, we kind of had the, the extreme makeover phenomenon, and that was where everybody was really focused on, um, you know, changing people's smiles in a really short period of time, and most of those were indirect techniques. Today, what we're going to talk about is, is direct. So when, you know, extreme makeover hit the United States, the premise there was you could pretty much take anybody's smile that you wanted to change, and in, in a couple visits, you know, give them a really nice set of teeth. Now, for for kids, it's a little different ball game because um, I used to do pedo when I first got out of school, and um, you know th there are kids that want to look better and things like that. But it was, uh, you know, in the United States, it was all about making adults look better. So today, what we want to talk about a little bit is how do we do that with anterior composites? How can we do that in one one visit? So the artistic requirements of anterior direct composites—they're pretty readily apparent. It takes a certain amount of a science, a certain amount of art, to make patients happy, to make them function correctly. And then there are cases that are more what I would call health-based, where the patients come in and they have, you know, like this patient Wes here, he has has issues with um, you know, caries and smoking and things like that. He's not so concerned about having a makeover. He wants really healthy teeth, and we can help him do that with composite as well. So the, the things that we can do for patients don't necessarily have to be indirect. I mean, they don't have to be lab processed. They don't have to be porcelain. They can be taken care of by the dentist in one visit. So we're going to talk about how, the, the first part of this presentation, we're going to talk about how can we do that in a simplified fashion. I mean, how can we give patients something that's very aesthetic, very functional, using, you know, one or two shades of composite, and then for the doctors who maybe want to ratchet it up a notch, how can we do that and um, in a highly aesthetic fashion? So wherever you travel or wherever I traveled all over the world, there are places and where patients really, really want to have a nice smile. And there are always dentists in that area that really, really want to provide that service. It's just a matter of, you know, do we have the products to do that and do we have the skills to do it? So no matter where you do travel, there's an appreciation for aesthetic dentistry. There's obviously an appreciation for it. And there's an appreciation for the dentist's ability to be able to provide these in a predictable fashion. And we want to try to simplify that for everybody. So a few years back, I wrote an article. It was called Lessons Learned from My Daughter. And basically, one of the premises in there was 
that, you know, we all have choices. As dentists, we have choices. We can do what we want to do. If you want to have a general practice and do a lot of services, that's great. In my practice, we're pretty focused on aesthetics and function, and that is, in particular, I do a lot of cases in composite for patients. So, you know, why do we use direct resin? Why, you know, why don't we just take teeth and prep them and, and send it to the lab and have them make um, porcelain or some other restoration? Well, first of all, it's a single visit procedure, which means the patient doesn't have to come back as many times. It's minimally invasive, which is huge for patients these days. Patients don't want teeth prep. They don't want their teeth cut down. So if we can add, that makes the patient a lot happier than if we have to subtract. Um, they're durable. Composite's very durable. It's got proven longevity, and it's renewable. So if a patient chips a piece off, they do some damage to it, they have another accident, something happens, they get some staining, we can renew the restoration rather than just totally replace it. Um, the margins are super gingival. So for patients whose plaque control is, like this young, young man, is less than optimal, that makes things a lot easier for them and for us, too, in terms of preventing recurrent caries. And there's a marginal seal because it's adhesive dentistry, it's not cemented dentistry. There's direct color control by the dentist, and we're able to, to impart you know, lifelike qualities of these restorations. They're not monochromatic. They don't look like, like a chunk of gum. So let, let's talk a little bit about kind of the basics here, and we'll, and we'll start into some simple cases. So if a patient comes in and they have either a fractured tooth or a restoration we're going to replace, we have to have some way to you know, set this up so that it's predictable. So it's less stressful for the doctor, less stressful for the staff, less stressful for the patient. And one of the first things we need to do, we have to establish some kind of boundaries for the restoration, particularly the occlusion. So if, if a doctor spends a lot of time building up a restoration and only to have to go adjust the occlusion and, and um, you know, reduce the lingual so much that they lose all the, the nice anatomy and the color they built, and then that's really a waste of everybody's time. So basically, we've got three choices to set this up to make it predictable. The first is you can freehand it, meaning you can, or you can call it, you know, set it up digitally. You can put your finger behind the tooth. You can lay the composite down. You can see how that all works out. You know, that's the quickest way to do it. It's certainly not the most predictable. It's certainly not the most aesthetic. And you're going to have a lot of adjusting to do afterwards. So you're going to eat up, you know, time you may think you may save on the front end, not making a stent you're going to lose on the back end by having to do adjustments. The second choice for me would be, you know, freehand is something I almost never do. Composite mock-up, we do occasionally. You know, if a patient really presses and they really have to have something done that day for a variety of reasons, you can mock it up in the patient's mouth. You can use some old composite, get an idea of, you know, what the shape and contour is going to be. You can make a putty stent in their mouth and then launch into that. Um, the, the third choice we have is to do a wax-up and make a putty stent. That's my preferred manner of restoring these teeth. And that way we take an impression. If it's you know, two, three, maybe four teeth, I'll wax it up. If it's more, we'll send it out to the lab to have them do it. Make a putty stent, have the patient come back, and that way you can lay out the composites you're going to use. You'll have the time that you need. You have the stent all set up. It's a lot less stressful for all parties, and you'll get a lot better result. Rather than having your staff trying to wedge a patient into your staff, in your, excuse me, in your schedule, you know, if you think about it, we're, we're all busy during the day. We've all got our schedules pretty tight. And if you take a procedure like this that takes, you know, might take an hour, depending on the amount of teeth, it might take an hour, two hours, three hours to do, that's something you can just, can't just kind of throw into the day and, and keep everybody, you know, somewhat unstressed and have it turn out really nice. And the, the whole reason that we're making these stents is, we're having to re replace a lingual part of the tooth that we can't envision or can't directly envision when we're doing the restoration, particularly if you're going to use a rubber dam or some kind of isolation. So the, the, uh, the use for the stent is to be able to set up the lingual of the tooth and then proceed onward from there. So you, you know, we're using the stent to add the composite, and then we're building this up and then we're curing it in the mouth. Once you have that platform to build on, it's really simple to, to go ahead and build up the rest of the tooth. Without that platform, it's very, very unpredictable. Okay, so let's let's talk a little bit about a simplified class for composite. Simplified to me means we're, we're talking about like two shades. If you want to do one, that'd be maybe ultra simplified. Well, let's talk about just two. So it'll give a little depth of color, a little bit of anatomy, a little bit of polychromicity, just a little bit. So if we're going to do a class two, 
let's say we're going to choose the mock-up route here. So we're going to mock this tooth up. We're going to use some old composite. We're going to build it up, get the contours right. And then the next thing we're going to do is make a putty stent. And then we're ready to go to set up this restoration for the patient. So in this case, you know, you've got two choices. If you've got a tooth you're going to restore, if you're a fan of doing self-etch, you could certainly use you know, Aubond SC to set this up adhesively. If you're a fan of total etch, you could etch the tooth and then use you know, Aubond 3 or Aubond TE and for total etch. So that, that's more of a doctor's preference on which one they're going to use. So the, the first thing we're going to do is you're either going to use SC or you're going to etch the tooth and use TE or Aubond 3. And then we're going to take that wonderful putty stent we talked about and you're going to use some, in this case we're going to simplify it. You're going to want to use something that, that has some ability to block out light because you don't want the tooth to look gray or dark in the area that you're stored once you're done. So in that, in that case what I would use is one of the all-purpose bodies, either like an A35 opaque or maybe an A10 opaque, depending on, of course, the color of the tooth. And you could use, if you're going to simplify this, you could even use like reflections, the dark dentin. So you have a couple choices here. If you have elite, you could use elite. In this case, ref reflections, we're talking about using two shades. You could use a dark dentin, something like that. What you're going to do is lay that into the stent and then build that up. And here I'm doing a little bit of just a little anatomy, some basic mamelons and things like that, and light cure that. So you've got this built up against the lingual shell. If you pop off the stent, this is what it looks like. And this will get like a little a little bit of depth of color to it. And what we're trying to do is, of course, this is a typhodont tooth. We're trying to mimic this a little bit. And then I'm going to add a second layer of the same composite. So once again, we're just dealing with two shades here. This is This isn't true polychromicity in the sense we're not using three or five or seven shades, we're just using two. So we're going to add a second layer of the same composite and light cure it. And now you need to add, you know, the incisal edge of the face so facial and you can use elite, like an aesthetic enamel like WE or A1, depending on the final shade you're trying to attain here. Or if you're using reflections, you could use NE, like the neutral, if you wanted to. So once again, we're just we're dealing in the realm of two shades. And then from a convenience form standpoint, meaning convenience forms when you take a ball of composite and, and roll it carefully in your fingers and then you put it on the tooth and spread it downward. Convenience meaning it's a lot easier than, you know, if you add a piece here and add a piece here and add a piece here, you're going to trap bubbles, air bubbles in here, which when you finish this, you're going to have to deal with and reseal and repair and things like that. So we add this on and basically smooth it down, drag it down like this. And like I said, there's there's a lot of choices. WE, A1, any from reflections. And like cure that. And then we're going to do basic finishing. We're going to use some burrs, carbide, um, light diamond, carbide, jiffy brush, polish with your polish of choice. We'll go through that in a little more detail later. And then do your final contour. So here's a, restora a restoration was done in two shades. So there's a little bit of you know, a little depth of color, a little bit of translucency, you know, a, a little bit of polychromicity. It's not just monochromatic. There's a little more lifelikeness, a little more natural look to it. So here's some examples of, of teeth that we restored, you know, in the last few months in my practice using two shades of composite. So there's one enamel shade and one dentin shade. So that could be elite. You could use, you know, one of the, you could use either a body shade or one of the, even one of the enamel shades that's darker, like an A35, an A2, something like that. And then one of the, the lighter enamel shades over it. Or I could use reflections, like a, once again, a dark dentin and like a frost layer in here. And that would give you this result. So these are just two shades. There's something for the blackout light and a little bit of dentin color, and there's something for enamel. Um, this patient, she wanted uh, her laterals to be a little longer and wanted to fill the space a little more. So once again, these are two shades of composite, a little bit of um, laser contouring on the laterals, and then adding a, a dentin shade, and then enamel shade over it. And one of my patients who's um, a little bit of a smoker here, so we clean this out. Once again, a dentin shade to, to block out light, 
and an enamel shade to impart a little bit of translucency. And a patient, this is a, a right before, young lady broke her tooth like the night before prom, so we didn't have time to do a full restoration, but I wanted to give her something that looked nice. So once again, two shades, a dentin shade or a blackout shade and an enamel shade. So let's, in the second realm, well, let's talk a little bit about direct veneer. So veneer is, you know, with the class four, we're blocking out more light. We've got some natural tooth to work with, some facial, and some gone, destroyed, missing, replaced. In this case, we're replacing all the facial of the tooth. A little bit different protocol, real similar. And again, we're going to do this in two shades. Later, we're going to do it in multiples, but this is just two. So in this case, we're going to isolate the adjacent teeth. Use a little Teflon tape. You can get this at, you know, around here we can get at Home Depot or someplace like that. You can get a, a spool for you know, a couple dollars that'll last you, you know, half your career. And this is just to isolate the teeth so that the adjacent ones don't get etched, and um, they also don't get adhesive on them. So you're going to etch the tooth for 20 seconds. In this case, um, it's Select HB. The, the new etchant, that uh, one with BAC, one without, and then that's rinsed off. And in this case, I used Albon 3, so the, I put on the primer and then the resin. You, know, you could also, if you wanted to, in this case, at the time I did this, we go here. Come on. There we go. Um, you know, since then, Albon T's come out in the ACE dispenser, so you could also use that. So the, um, if you're using Albon 3, you put the resin, it's air thinned out. should look real shiny when you're all done. And then it's light cured. There we go. So now once again, we're going to pick, we're just going to use two shades. So I, for this one, for this exercise, this is actually a hands-on course that I did. We used an A35. So A35. Do the convenience form again, kind of bring that down, shape it over the tooth. And then if you want to give this, if you don't want this to be just straight across on the edge, you like to have a little bit of depth of color, then you want to impart some irregularities into the incisal edge. In this case, I'm doing this one without a matrix. And so here's what it looks like close up. So basically, you know, in nature, things are never straight, they're never flat, they're never they're never cut straight across. So there's irregularities here, and that lets light come through at different angles. And then I'm going to add over that, similar to the class four, we're going to add a translucent enamel, either WE from Elite or say any from Reflections, or you could use if it was a lighter shade, you could use like the Frost from Reflections. And then we're going to form incisal the ledge. So, so again, I'm not, in this case, we're not using a stent. So for the doctors who maybe you know, would rather not, they're not comfortable, here's another way they could do that. And you need to check these from all angles. So I'm checking it from the incisal right here to make sure we're getting the ballpark of the adjacent tooth. And then we're going to go back to the convenience form. So it's a ball of composite. And I'm going to drag this down with a composite instrument down towards the incisal ledge. But I'm going to leave the proximals open, and I'm going to show you why. So we're going to drag this down from the gingival down the incisal, and then light cure it. And the proximals are open. The reason the proximals are open is it's much easier to control your composite if you don't restore the entire tooth at one time. If you do, what's going to happen by the time you get, let's say you have your incisal contour, you're going to find, excuse me, all composites will move a little bit, some slump a lot. Elite doesn't slump very much at all, but if you build this entire piece up, you may find mesial or distal or gingival not exactly in the position you left it. So I don't restore them initially, then we light cure them. And then I go back and add like a little thin rope of composite here and take care of the distal, the gingival, and the mesial. And you can, if you want to make this nice and smooth and minimize your finishing, you can use a brush put some modeling resin on there, smooth that out, and then light cure it. And then you're going to want to cure the oxygen inhibited layer before you finish. You use glycerin, Vaseline, KY, anything you want to. You need to block out the oxygen. And full light cure, 
and then there's an evaluation. You need to take a look at what's the contour look like. I'm a little high right here at the moment. It needs to be cut back a little bit. And then we go through finishing. So there's, you can use discs, um, fine carbides at the gingiva to get things smooth. On the lingual, I'll use um, like a football burr and then go in there with a brownie point. And then jiffy brushes. And then if you like rubber cups, that's great. I'd use just like a medium and a fine. If you use a coarse, it'll it'll take away all the anatomy you have in there, also flatten the tooth out. And then renamelize on um, like a buff wheel to get that real shiny. And then, you, of course, you want to check out and make sure that from the lingual it resembles the adjacent tooth, from the facial it does as well. And so this is the final tooth when it's polished. So, um, you know, uh, elite polish is really nice when you go through the steps, just follow the steps. And you can see because I use convenience form, there's minimal air bubbles in here, very little at all. So you don't have to go back and repair those. And here's an example of two cases I did where we did just two shades for you know, um, restoring multiple anterior teeth. So two young ladies, one came in and she wanted to have a pretty smile. She'd gone to see her dentist, and she wasn't real happy that her teeth were uneven. And so their require or their um, kind of solution at the time was they decided just to file off her teeth and make them even, but they also shortened them off. And she has a little bit of a reverse smile. And we went through, you know, her choices, what she could have done, and the parents and the patient and I decided that composite would be best for her versus porcelain. Um, she plays a lot of sports, gets injured a fair amount, and we can always renew or restore pieces of uh, composite she might chip versus replacing a whole veneer on her. So this is an incisal mock-up with composite with flowable. So we're getting an idea of length, make sure she likes length, take some photos. And then I have this waxed up. And we made the wonderful putty stent. And so this is one visit. She, she, this patient drove a long way, quite a few hours to my office to have this done. Um, so we wanted to get it all done at one time. This is immediate post-op. She's a little bit, obviously, kind of red here from cord up in here. But two shades of composite, a real light dentin shade. And then if, if you just put one shade of composite on there, particularly a really light color, the teeth will look very artificial because they don't have any depth. So they need to be covered with a layer of enamel at the very least at the at the um, incise of one half and preferably the entire tooth to give it impart a little depth of color to it so that's our immediate post-op and then we have another patient about the same age come in super high caries rate um, has decay everywhere or had decay everywhere the parents came in and their their consult the reason they brought her in was they, they told me that they want to have her come in and have 10 veneers done and and this is not a good place to be doing veneers on a patient who hasn't got their hygiene under control yet. So let's see what do we have. So we have she's got oral hygiene issues. She's 16 years old. You need to be thinking about something that's upgradable later when she's older. What she can have in terms of future wear. Overall, what's her restorative needs? They're huge, posterior, anterior, everywhere. Now she has her aesthetic wants, but I also want to make sure her treatment's going to last. So what we end up doing the the agreement we came to with her parents was to do some what I call basic composite veneers. So get her hygiene cleaned up first, get her posterior teeth cleaned up, and then in the anterior, some of these decalcified areas are decay, so those had to be restored. And then give her you know, a lighter color smile that if you know, somewhere down the road she wants to do veneers, that's great, but at least give her something that looks a little better. Um, one visit with her, um, I usually have the patients back, or I always have them back a second time to do refinements and things. In this case, the patient didn't want to. So her teeth, she's got better hygiene. You can see even on the bottom here, a lot of this is, is improved. Um, you know, these up here, particularly the laterals, are a little bit square, but the patient was fine with that. And um, actually, they didn't, she wanted to come back and have me adjust them. So she comes in, gets her hygiene done. That's good. So this is a, an example of a place I, don't, I think porcelain would be not appropriate. And in this case, we're satisfying her desires for patients' desires and mine to have something that's you know, that's predictable and
that if, if she gets in trouble in the future with interproximal decay, we can restore pretty easily. Okay. All right, so let's talk about, we, we went through a couple scenarios where teeth are, we're trying to do things a little more simplified, say two shades. Let's go through some cases that are more complicated. So if you're going to restore a complicated tooth, you need to look a lot more closely at the anatomy, the color, what's going on with the tooth. So here's a couple of, these are small class fours, but using it as an example of evaluation that we're, go, we're going to restore. These are, this is Matthew's before and Matthew's after. So the first thing we're going to look at is, is overall the texture anatomy of his teeth. The only way you can do that is when the teeth are wet. So they need to be, be moist. You can observe those, we make notes, take pictures, and then we're going to look at them dry, because when they're dry, you're going to see microanatomy, you know, these horizontal scratches, you're going to see incisal translucency. So th those are two different areas we want to observe and then make notes about and pick out the appropriate composite that we're going to use. So his, his final restorations are, you know, based on those observations first, but afterwards we always take a we take photos and then I convert them to black and white because that's the only way you really know if you if you got the value straight on. So we look at Matthew's teeth. You know, value's pretty good. It's maybe a little low here and maybe a little high there, but overall, you know, pretty good. But that's from a pre-evaluation. That all comes from pre-evaluation. Okay, let's see what we got. So th there's a couple things I use here to do cases. One is I use True Shade. So True Shade allows you to look at lights. It's a 5,500 Kelvin corrected light. And what you can do is you can you, you look through this, put it over the patient's tooth. You can take photographs through here, and it'll give you a much more accurate representation of what the patient's shade and value is of their teeth versus we all have, we have sunlight, we have reflected light, we have incandescent light, we have fluorescent light. We have all these things in our operatories that aren't accurate. And if you want to get more information on that, you can go to optidentlabline.com, and that's where they have the true shade. And then I also use these um, charts from Dr. Vanini, which are from the site mycerium.it. These are color charts, so we go through these for every patient who has an anterior composite restoration, a class for or, or a composite veneer, and look at you know, what's the value, excuse me, what's the chroma of their teeth, what's the value where do they have white and how much? Where do they have blue and how much? And do they have any um, interesting or unusual characterizations in their teeth? So here's a polychromatic teeth, or a polychromatic case, excuse me. So this is Kevin, and he, his primary concern is number nine. So he has this big kind of combo, class four, combo composite veneer, and he has uh, some serious asymmetry. So we're going to do a little gingival recontouring and try to get gingival heights the same. And then we ended up doing some ortho down here to retract these two teeth to give me enough space. So for color establishment and taking a, um, an accurate shade, one method you can use is when, when, our, when our eyes are looking at teeth, they're looking at a lot of things. They're looking at the tooth, the gums, the surrounding teeth. And they're even looking at things peripherally. Like if you have patients that have you know, um, patient bibs that are yellow or red or pink or some bright color like that, they'll actually distract your eyes and it'll make it much more difficult to make an accurate determination of what the color is. So I have my staff buy, you can buy little pieces of cardboard that can either be neutral gray, for like photographic neutral gray, or, or a light blue or medium blue. And this is the color of the bibs I have on my patients. Same thing. When we're doing these long aesthetic cases, you want to have a chance to have your eyes rest, and the only way they can do that is if you can, you know, occasionally glance down at the bib and, and let your eyes rest on this color, and then get back to get back to what we're doing here. So we cut these out, and we use them to we take photos of the tooth we're going to restore, and obviously the tooth next to it, and then make a determination from there on the shades that we're going to use. And if you're going to be doing centrals, or we're going to do any ants anterior teeth, but particularly centrals, you have to have exact proportions. And the only way you're going to do that is not by guesstimating. You have to have some kind of way of accurately measuring what you're restoring. So these are 
these are my old calipers from dental school. Those are, you know, back from dinosaur times. And these are some calipers I got at midwinter about 12 years ago. And then these are digital calipers that go out to two decimal points. So if you want to do something accurate, you at least need to be in this realm. This would be even better. And so we're going to measure the central and measure the um, adjacent central and make sure that we're restoring the same. So let's say this central is a millimeter wider than this one. Then we have to look at are we going to add a half a millimeter here to split the difference? What are we going to do? We can't just restore this as a much larger, wider tooth. So this is a this is a mock-up case. We're going to mock up eight nine with flowable. Excuse me, just mock up the adjacent tooth with flowable. There's a little fracture here. So we mock these up, and then get the basic contour on the. I'm showing on the facial here, but you certainly need to get it on the lingual as well. And then the mock-up's done. That just takes a few minutes to do in the patient's mouth. And then we make a stent. And then we're going to pack some cord. So we pack cord for two reasons. One is to retract and to allow us better observation. The other is to prevent the adhesive, whether we're doing self-etch, or in this case, we're going to do total etch, preventing the adhesive from going past the gingival margin up under the root surface and then having it be light cured when we light cure it. Because if you do that, you're going to have this really irregular, unhygienic surface on the root that's going to cause inflammation for the patient. So I took off the old composite. And so, like I said, Kevin's got a combination. It's like a big composite veneer that had a class four hidden underneath. So we're doing both at the same time. And if you watch this as we go through, you see the mistake I made here was I didn't prep this up high enough. So I should have gone up about another millimeter or so. So things are going to turn out, you know, pretty decent, but I'm going to be a little short here. So photography is good for learning as well. So there's prep. So etch, remember we talked about, oh, sorry, back up. So etch, and we talked about the Teflon tape to um, isolate the adjacent teeth, protect them. And you can use select HV. And you're going to rinse that off. And then apply your adhesive. In this case, it's one step. You could use, you know, all bond three. You could use, if you like self-etch, you could use that. And, and uh, my preference in an anterior tooth with a lot of enamel is to do total etch. So we're going to light cure that on the buccal lingual. This is an ultra loom light, the one with the, the giant footprint. And then the stent, we're going to place a little bit of milky white resin. So no matter what kit and what type of composite you're using, every system has a milky white composite of some kind. And in the elite system, it's WE. So we're going to place that in the stent, press it up against the tooth. You can take an instrument, if you have a small instrument up here, and lightly adapt this and then light cure it. And then when you take the stent off, this is what you're going to see. And in this case, because um, Kevin's teeth, he has a very light edge along here, like an incisal of halo, we're going to add that with some B1. This is, um, this is much bigger than it needs to be. It needs to be about a quarter of this size. That looks more like a you know, big sausage than a little roll of composite. Add that on there and light cure it. And now you have your framework to build everything up on. So if you did your stent accurately, you don't have to worry about reductions on the lingual. There'll be very little on the incisal, if any at all. If you're freehand in this, it's kind of out in space, you're going to have a, a whole lot of reducing to do. So the mamlons here form with a little A2. And we talked about irregularity, meaning you know in nature, things aren't straight across. So I'm trying to make these a little bit irregular. And you like cure that. You're going to put some A1 over the, the surface. And then you have a choice. You could use WE. You could use clear. You could use A1 enamel as your final layer. In this case, it's A1. And these are um, T-pens. They're little um, they're brushes from Mycerium that I like to use. And they come in different shapes. You can get these in the posterior. They make grooves. You can use these on the anterior. They're a little stiffer. And then we're going to do bulk reduction with some discs. 
and then mark the facial contours to make sure that you know I'm starting to I'm looking at okay where's the concavities on this tooth where's the convexities and you can polish with whatever you're comfortable with fine diamonds carbides silicone cups and points um, I like to use there's also a, it's called the Ena shiny kit it's a combination of all those and your final polish is going to be with a jiffy brush we showed earlier and some enamel eyes on a goat wheel or a felt wheel or the Ena shiny kit or you could also put a, a final layer of Biscover LV and light cure that that's Kevin's tooth before the giant uh, composite veneer class 4 combo. That's Kevin after's. Um, so up here I'm a little short. Here a little teeny bit short too. I retracted those teeth to ortho. I should have retracted them a little more. And overall Kevin's been really happy. I've asked him probably four or five times to let me go up in here and kind of make this a little better. But he's, um, he's plenty happy the way he is. Okay, a little more complicated. Four anterior teeth, um, laterals that have been restored multiple times with a few different composites, and two anterior centrals. Um, patient wants number nine to look like it's in line with number eight without doing ortho, so we've got a little bit of nine to reduce and a little bit of eight to add to. So the first thing we do is restore centrals for symmetry. So we're not going to go through that because of this in this exercise I'm going to show the lateral to restore the centrals and this is just a single color of um, anterior composite the WE that that light enamel so a little bit I'll go back so a little bit of reduction right here and then it's just addition so it's it's no basically no prep just cleaning up roughing bonding a little bit of prep right here on this one So then, now we're going to concentrate on seven. This tooth we're going to restore. We did a wax up, actually evolved four teeth. Place cord, and when we take off the old composite, it's, it's a smaller lateral. It's like a, it's not quite a peg lateral, it's a smaller lateral. We're just going to remove the old composite and put a small chamfer line here. And then, once again, Teflon tape. From the hardware store and etch. And in this case, I'm using one step again. Since we're doing total etch, you could do solve on three or TE. And there's our our friend, the stent. Put a little bit of composite in here. Press that up. Light cure it. And I pulled it away and took this picture. You could see the separation. Take it away, and now you have your framework. Even though there's this is a split rubber dam isolation, so there's rubber dam up here. Um, you really don't have any need to, you know, to uh, be worried about this getting contaminated. And it's a pretty simple rest restoration from the sense that we're going to do a little bit of dent and color. And these are white, white tint for a little bit of polychromicity. If you look on the, the uh, cuspid, there's a lot of white here. And a brush with the final enamel layer, which is this is way too thick here, but I'm going to finish it back. And this is the this is basically the polishing sequence that I use to go through for teeth. So there's discs for gross reduction, fine diamonds for a little anatomy and shaping, carbides for further smoothing, and then jiffy brush to start the shine, and then enamelize or a diamond paste or in a shiny paste on a goat wheel to buff it up. So here's the um, lateral before, lateral after, and you know, in, in a female patient, in a male patient, um, teeth are a little more square in the female, a little rounder, like a nice little teardrop shape. There's before and there's after. So, you know, conservative composites. Could we do veneers here? Yes. We'd have to prep more tooth away, and uh, we wouldn't have the advantages of one visit, um, renewability, you know, some of those the things we talked about at the beginning. And this is Dr. Vanini's color chart a little closer up. So we're going to look at another case here. Um, so this is Christie's case, and this is a, we call mixed media. So she has a big, huge composite, a PFM, 
a smaller class for so how are we going to get these all matched together and not say do you know four crowns or three crowns or, or something much more aggressive back. so let me go through here and look at you know where does she have white you know, what's her the incisal ledges look like does she have any really unusual characterization no so here's here's a prep this is using a computer called the Wallcom board so it lets me draw what we're doing instead of trying to take a photo because when we take pictures of composite it doesn't always show accurately what we're doing so in this case the prep is basically where the black line is let's just take out the old composite so what I'm going to do here is we're going to do um, porcelain veneer and all porcelain crown and then a class 4 composite take out the old composite and you're going to see kind of the, the recurring theme here is we make a stent and then we replace the enamel that's missing on the lingual with the stent. And then on the incisal edge, you could use a little bit of white tint, which I prefer because it's easier for me to manipulate. Or if you're really skilled, you could use a little B1 composite, a light composite. And then basically, we're going to build this down in layers. We're going to put some A3, A2, A1. And you cure each of those layers as you do them. Do them. And then a little bit of white tint. And um, you can either use clear composite or OBN, which is a, a blue, opalescent blue composite. Put some in the, in, um, the mammalian area so you have a little bit of translucency, some depth of color. And then we're going to cover that over with the enamel layer here again. And so that's Christy before. And um, I had uh, Olivier Tree, who's a amazing ceramist do he did the the uh, the veneer here for me and the ceramic crown so Christy whitened her teeth um, and then Olivier did the veneer Olivier did the crown and I did the class four there's Christy after there's Christy after after so the so my goal here was not to prep this for a crown this for a crown this for a crown that's kind of the easy way out She's still got all her two structure that she walked in with here. She's got most of it here, and this was already um, we've been pretty aggressively prepped for crown. Okay, so so this is Taylor. So Taylor slips in the bathtub at home, cracks her tooth. Mom calls the office, frantic about Taylor missing this big piece of her tooth. So so what are we going to do here? Now we've got a patient who's you know eight or nine years old at this time. I mean, is a, is a veneer really, you know, the, in this patient's best interest? I don't think so. How about a, how about a crown? Um, that's kind of scary when I have patients come into my office and they're really young, I mean really young, and they have a crown on the front tooth because they ship part of it off of there. I mean, at the very least, even if we added a, a monochromatic piece of composite here, that would serve her much better than prepping this all away to do something indirect. So with, with Taylor's case, like most really young children, she her um, the chrome in her teeth is A2, maybe A1, very high value, a lot of white going on, a little bit of blue, and she's got these, the little clouds, Vanini calls them clouds here. So the prep is basically, you know, take a um, the brownie point, take off all the shards on here, She's got a big fracture on the lingual that you can't see, so it's kind of unfair, but I've got a lot of adhesive retention from the lingual, and I'm not I'm not putting like a big, huge bevel up in here, because if you look at this microanatomy, she has crazy microanatomy on here, and to reproduce that's really difficult to do. So you could do, if you're a little more comfortable, you could use what um, some doctors call like a starburst prep, little fingers that go up and down to, to break up the composite, that would work perfectly well too. Um, I'm trying to minimize the amount of this that I have to reproduce because it's really, really hard to do. So this is the, the same thing we're envisioning. What's Taylor's tooth going to look like when we're done? So she has these developmental notches. She's missing this part of her tooth. So we're going to replace the lingual with the light-colored enamel. Then we're going to you need to block out this area, so you need a very opaque um, and uh, very opaque and a, and a composite with a fair amount of chroma right here. So that's going to be either like an A3, A4. It could be a lead aesthetic enamel. You could use one of the body shades we talked about earlier. 
like the A35, it's enough so that the light can't go through here. Otherwise, you're going to have this gray line that's going to look really nasty. And then we're going to drop down and build back what she's missing. So she's missing some dentin, irregular. And then she's got all this white we talked about. We're going to have to replace a whole lot of white. It's a little bit of tint. And then put a little bit of clear, or you could use OBM blue, something like that in there. She's got little bits of blue. And then we're going to put back all this lovely characterization she has. And we need to cover that with composite. If you put the characterization, if you put the white on the outside, it'll just wear off in a short period of time. It has to be covered by some kind of final layer. And I added these little, she's got the little uh, whitish, you know, Vanini calls clouds, these areas here. And put a little bit of composite over those. And then we're all done. So this is Taylor post bathtub dive. And that's Taylor after. So let's put the little notches in there and she'll wear those off just like she'll wear these off over time. So there's the happy Taylor after, long after the bathtub dive. Okay, so this is Tip. Tip is Taylor's sister. And Taylor, after Taylor had her teeth done, Tiff decided she'd like to have hers done. So she had this composite done about a year, a year and a half before she saw me. Um, you know, one color, kind of monochromatic. It got real stained. She's got another composite actually right here. It's a little more difficult to see. So once again, you know, what could we do here? I could do veneer. I could do another veneer. I think that's way too aggressive. And she was... 17 at the time that we did this a few years ago. So, you know, what would I do for my own daughter? For my own daughter, I would definitely be doing composite. So we're going to strip off the old composite, and you'll see actually this composite extends all the way up a lot farther than it looks. So there's the preps. All I did was I took off the old composite, I took off the old composite. I didn't prep any more tooth. A little bit of enamel or on the incisal and the lingual to replace, not much. Once again, that's you know, we're using a stent. I'm not showing it here. We're using a stent with a little bit of WE. And then we're going to just build down like we talked about before. So like an A3, A35, an A2, a little bit here to block out the area that's a, that was broken pretty deep. A little A1. And you're going to see a lot of these cases, there, there's commonalities. Once you do these, it's the same materials. It's the same shades. It may be used in little different places or in different amounts. And then a little bit of either clear or blue for depth of color. A little bit of white. She's young. Young people have a lot of white in their teeth in different areas, characterization. And then this is, I'm just showing the prep line for this one and for that one. And putting a little bit of enamel over, giving their a little bit of white. You can use, once again, tint for me is a lot easier. You could use little pieces of white composite if you're really handy. If you've ever watched any of Dr. Benigni's videos, he can take these little pieces of composite and smooth them out into the, the thinness of some tint. It's pretty amazing. And so that's TIFF after. So I took these pictures, if you notice, um, you know, most of the restoration is on eight. On nine, she's got a concavity here, and I've got a con, more con, excuse me back. Concavity, convexity. So I had to go back in here and, and repolish these a little bit also. She's got more anatomy here than she has there. But down here you can see the little bits of like blue and white and things like that that make the tooth look really lifelike. So that's TIFF and TIFF after. And this is a picture. The patients in my office who have aesthetic work done, whether it's one tooth um, they have one composite done, the class four, if they have 10 veneers done or they have their whole mouth restored, we offer them the opportunity to have photography. In fact, that's what we were doing pretty much all yesterday at my office, taking pictures after pictures for patients. And, the, and they're a gift, so we give them to them and they can, you know, they can give them the significant other as a gift. They can do whatever they like. And uh, Tiff's case, this picture I took of her, she actually um, asked her school and they replaced her the yearbook photographer that took her picture, she used this instead. So you know, she's very happy, and um, and so are we. And you never know who knows who and who's going to talk to who about you know the dentistry that you do. So in her case, 
she knew somebody who knew somebody whose mom was in the newspaper, and so we ended up getting a real nice story done in here about Tiff getting her, her teeth done, and we had the patients go over to the salon in town to get uh, get their hair and makeup done beforehand so they can have, you know, it's a nice ex experience. It makes us a little different than uh, the other offices in town. Okay, next one is, okay, so this, um, this is a patient that we had come in. She was getting married. Um, Terry's getting married in 10 days. So she comes in and says, you know, Dr. Morgan, I got this stuff going on. Can you take care of this for me? And um, we get married in, it's like 10 days a week. I'm moving to Honolulu, and I'm never coming back. So that's that's a little bit of a time constraint and uh, not a whole lot of pressure, but we want to make sure we, we gave her some nice results. So when I talked to her, I said, look, You've got some a lot bigger issues going on here than just, you know, fractured teeth. Why are these fractures? It's because of her occlusion. So I can make this look better for her, but it's not considered a permanent restoration. This is more like a wedding enhancement. And then I gave a referral to a colleague of mine in Honolulu to go get, you know, her bigger issue is she needs ortho and some other things. So the preps are pretty simple. I'm just roughing up. She did most of the prepping for me already, actually. Roughing these up, the blue is where we're replacing enamel again with a very small stent. And then basically we've got three colors in very small amounts. We've got A2, so we've got aesthetic enamel, lead A2. We've got a little blue or clear in here, and over the top some WE. And that's pretty much it. So four teeth. I did her lower four and her upper four. That's the diagram after. She comes in all chipped up, and you know, basically one appointment we get her smile looking nice for a wedding, and then she came in and um, that's her fiance Patrick at the time fiance no husband Patrick, and so we took some pictures of them and um, you know, we she had a lot of fun we had a lot of fun and it was nice to see it can make a really huge difference in people's lives with some things that seem pretty simple you know we look at. It's not like her teeth were broken off with the gum line or she's missing, but to her, it's a huge deal because she's getting married. And a lot of patients, the things that we do, sometimes they seem pretty simple or maybe not so important, but to them that they really are. Okay, um, we're going to talk about a couple other things direct composite-wise here. And so we talked about class fours. We talked about composite veneers. Okay, so why are we talking about you know, post and course and things, because these are going to involve direct composite. So in this case, this is a, this is a patient who um, had fractured the tooth, need to have endo, so I have them go to the endodontist to get the endo done, and then we're going to, re we're going to restore this prior to me doing the composite. So he has, you know, removing the excess gutta percha, and this is going to be restored using total etch, one step, then I built up and cemented the, the DT post with core flow, and then I built up composite over that. And in this case, the, the patient has, he basically has no room because of his occlusion for me to do anything ceramic because he's just going to fracture it. And he's also, at the time, was 19, 20 years old, and it does all sorts of crazy extreme sports. So he broke these teeth originally doing one sport, and then he broke them again doing um, some wakeboarding. So I want to give him something. Remember we talked about renewability. I want to give him something that if he fractures these again, I can get in there and add to them. If I do porcelain on there, it's pretty much a guarantee they're going to be broken and we're going to be re-prepping them. So I'm going to make a composite crown and a composite veneer with elite. Then I add enamel shade, a little bit of white tint, and then I'm going to put Discover over them build those up. This is just in my little tiny lab in my office. Try this in the patient's mouth. No, not fully polished yet. And so there he is with his, he walks in the office with his tooth fractured off. He had the endo done. You can see how tight his bite is there. There's no room for porcelain there. Even after I prep, you have like half a millimeter. And I'm not going to make him a, a, zirc a full zirconia crown. That would just be really ugly. And so that's him after. So here's another use for direct composite, also incorporating in, you know, the DT post and the buildup. Now if he goes out, let's see, okay, he skied and he broke this, he wakeboarded and he broke it. I don't know, if he motocrosses and he breaks it, 
at least I can get in here and I can add to it and renew it or you might have to replace it but if it's porcelain then you know porcelain repair is is doable but in his case it's not practical and there's his after okay young patient this is about six months ago slips at school cracks his two front teeth one thing we're starting to do actually I did this yes day before yesterday is we've had enough young patients that we've restored class fours for that the parents in the area know that we're kind of the practice to go to if their children slip they break a tooth and they want it to look really look like a tooth not just get you know it quick repaired so he cracked at school he came in unfortunately he'd broken them both down into the pulps so he had to go get endo done on these teeth and this is real similar so I'm going to use select HV I'm going to etch these one step core flow DT post and then we're going to use composite to build them up so they've been etched one step like your core flow posts go in here we go etch one step using our wonderful and well-known stent on the lingual to add to because I need I need a framework so here's my framework there's with the stent off and then giving them a little bit of color young patient like nine nine and a half years old and we talked about white white's a real common color high values very common in young patients and then let me go back so took the stent off I have the framework I'm adding a little bit of border um, halo if you want to call it that and then I'm going to build these up on the facial I gave them a little bit more color and then one layer of the light enamel over it polish it Let's see if I have the after after no he was here yesterday and actually he was back in yesterday we had, that's one of the patients we had in for follow-up for the full face pictures so um, you know a really nice young patient and now he's got a couple of teeth that look you know somewhat like natural teeth it's not like he's got you know a big chiclet of gum here and a big chiclet of gum there and the patients are real happy I'm real happy and these are you know these are not quick procedures there's two teeth like this is going to be about probably about three hours like an hour and a half a piece for me to do that's after we wax it up and make the stent and do all those things so you know what kids fall down a lot my kids fall down my daughter's done this this is not her case but you know, we have patients do this all the time where they're another uh, football accident young patient football accident cracks off a couple teeth so if this was your son what would you do, do you, you know would you prep these for veneers I hope not zoom crowns on them well, I really hope not so composites really you know it's the, the go-to choice for these type of restorations and since we did these this is going to be about nine ten months ago um, this young man came in and he you know cracked a corner off this in another football uh, incident so we can just add back on okay um, another use for direct composites since we're talking about direct is if you've ever taken off an old or previous we'll say previous case of restorations you never know what's underneath there so this is a patient a couple years ago came in she had some veneers done wasn't real happy um, they'd been done maybe six seven months before I saw her we took these off and when I took them off I just prepped them down the cement line popped them off she's got decay all over the place so the previous dentist apparently had kind of left what was there and just kind of prepped over it and put the veneers over it so there's an approximate decay all over the place and here's a close-up so I'm just prepping down the cement line you can see little bits of cement here and there's decay all over the place so what are we going to do here I'm not going to prep this in and make it more concave and then ask my lab to fill it with porcelain because we're also going to have really uneven things as far as optical properties go so the best way the quickest way the easiest way to build these out to restore these is excavate decay then take SE self fetch and just use some elite flow build these out rough them out and then prep to ideal so instead of saying you know your lab guy dear Bob please block these out and make me some really nice veneers why don't you give your lab something that'll you know make them make them happy because their life's pretty stressful sometimes too block these out give them some nice preps and then they'll give you some nice ceramics if we give our lab techs 
crummy preps, we can't, it's not fair to ask them to do really exceptional work. So they need really good preps if we want really good work back. And SE is a great way to block out an elite flow, block out undercuts on posterior teeth, which we showed last time, or block out undercuts and decay on anterior teeth. So we're going to get these all blocked out, get them all set up, take impressions, send them to the lab. You know, if, and I want, I expect my lab guy to do to work that fits great, looks great, but to do that, I have to give him a prep that he can work with. Okay, so we're gonna, this is a case of using direct composite as a mock-up and a temporary. So in this, this is a case where we had Adrian came in, she doesn't like, she has a couple old composites that have stained, she has some decalcifications. Okay, so what are our choices here? Direct composite veneers, could do conventional, what I would call moderate to high, high deep prep veneers. Um, you know, there's a couple different things. And here I'm going to do mi minimal or no prep veneers on her. But composite is an important part of the process. So what we do is we, we take impressions of the patient's teeth, so it's no prep. We're taking impressions, all the records, stick bite, face bow, all that good stuff. And then I'm using B1 body for temps. Why am I doing this if we're, if we're not prepping anything? Because you have to get an idea of what's going to look good on the patient from a, you know, a length standpoint, from a width standpoint, and you have to give something to the lab. You can't just send them an impression and say, make me some veneers. They need to know, are these veneers going to be 10 millimeters long, 11.5 millimeters long? How wide are they going to be? What are the proportions going to look like? What are the shapes going to be? So that's all done chair side and then we just take an impression of this and send it to the lab and say please copy. So this is one shade B1. We're going to do these direct in her mouth. They are splinted together meaning I'll, I'll bond the teeth and they are splinted because it's going to be tough to keep them on otherwise and we're going to spot etch them. Excuse me. <clears throat> spot etch them because if you completely etch them then you're going to have to completely cut them off and that kind of defeats the purpose of having no prep. So spot edge, splint it together, make a dupe. So here's a B1 shade tab. There's a B1. She's a little, this is right after, so a little decalcified, but basically spot on. We take a picture for the lab to, to give them information. We take a picture for the patient, sit them down, let them take a look at it. Adrian liked the length. She likes the color. And then we send these off to the lab. These things are super, super thin. They're from one-tenth to three-tenths of a millimeter thick or more then would be more accurate. And you can see when we put silane in here how, how truly thin these are. So we use the two-part silane. I like that because I always know that the chemistry is fresh. I don't have to worry about it, you know, about hydro, excuse me, hydrolyzing and, and it being not as strong as I would like it to be. And then we try these in, and I'm going to try them in with a couple different um, choices of choice two. We take photos and then let the patient, the patient I'll discuss about you know, what looks better. She liked this, so this is what we're going to use. And this is Adrian before. This is Adrian immediate post op, a little red, a little bloody from the cord. Four. And that's Adrian like a year and a half later. And then that's Adrian. I had her come back in last year for some other some follow-up pictures. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about one of one other way you can use direct is just use straight flowable. So flowables are getting more and more filled, and as they get more and more filled, they have more uses because they can take more. I want to say abuse, but you know, external use in the oral cavity. I still wouldn't use I wouldn't use a flowable say for um, like a large class one composite that the patient's going to be chewing on, but in class fives. And in other areas, I think it's completely appropriate. So here we have a patient with cervical caries that already has been excavated. We can use some cord and make sure that you know we've got some decent isolation here. Split rubber dam again, and this is with using Albon SC. We use that and light cure it. And what I do is I take the flowable resin, I put it over the dentin, and take it to the gingival margin with an explorer. The reason I do that is I find I get a lot better adaptation and seal than if I use start and go straight off with 
you know, a hybrid composite. So one of the benefits of flowables is they're elastomeric. They stretch a little bit. So you can use it just like we would in a class two. You could put this up at the margin, use the explore, tease it up there, light cure it. And that's what it's going to look like there. And then I'm going to do it a second time. So there's a little bit to the margin. I'm going to do it again and get a little bit to the margin. Second layer of flowable. And then I'm going to put over a layer of a nano hybrid or a micro hybrid. In this case, I used A2 and WE. I'm going to place those with the composite instrument, light cure those as well. These are, each increment is light cured. And that's the final restoration. So I'm a little high in value. In other words, I got a little too light of color here. But see like the little scratches. I don't know if you could see those on the, the computer, but doing a little bit of microanatomy with a, you could use um, like a medium diamond. If you have an electric hand piece, it's great. You could turn down the torque. If you put little scratches anatomy in there, that kicks off the light and then it doesn't look so flat. So one of the reasons this looks somewhat natural is because it has anatomy just like the tooth does. If it was just flat, it would look real fake. It would look better if I picked a little better color, but you know, it's in the ballpark. It's functional. And look at the margins. The most important part is the margins are all sealed. So long term, this is going to be a pretty functional restoration for the patient. OK, one more thing. Class 5 is done entirely with flowable. Patient comes in, multiple issues. Big occlusal issues, periodontal issues. First thing I want to do is get her cleaned up. Just let's let's clean up decay, stain, things like that. In this case, I used for her class fives. We used just flowable. So a, a darker shade, an A35, a lighter shade, an A2, and then covered it with a, a very translucent shade. So her, you know, these restorations there. Functional, you know, they're, they're, they're pretty aesthetic. It's not like a hybrid, but it's also, I find this easier to manipulate down here than using a, a hybrid composite. So we're getting her cleaned up. You can see we already started prepping and temping some teeth, working out her occlusion. So this isn't, you know, this isn't jumping in and ignoring all these other issues we, going, we see going on. It's getting in there and cleaning things up so that we can move forward and, and you know, help her with her comprehensive treatment. Okay, so one, you know, at the beginning of this presentation, I mentioned that article I wrote, and one of the other points I made in there, or my daughter made in there, was you know, my daughter told me always be thankful, say thank you. So you know, I'd like to thank all the people all over the world here who, who took the time to sit and listen to this presentation. I know you all have. You know, businesses to take care of, practices to take care of, patients to take care of, clients to take care of, family to take care of. And so I do appreciate the time that you took to sit through this. Um, and um, so for my kids, thanks for listening. If you'd like more information, you're more than welcome to go to my website. We've started a doctor's page on there, a doctor's seminars page, where I've started to put some of the, the courses that I teach, and we'll be adding to that, especially next year, the um, adding the locations I'll be teaching at. We're going to be actually providing some um, training DVDs and videos for for doctors and for um, actually for some of the distributors to help them to, to uh, help their doctors better. So the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to take some questions, correct? Okay. That is correct, Doctor. I, actually, I see a few of the questions coming through now. But before we start on this question, just a brief comment uh, or a note that uh, a lot of the uh, people, some people may be asking, or as dentists may be asking, where they can purchase the products or some of these products that Dr. Morgan has been mentioning of, of the Bisco products, or um, um, and who they can purchase them from. The um, the answer to that is the you know everyone everyone every country has a distributor uh, or a depot, a dental depot that can um, that can give you uh, the pricing of any of the products that that we have been talking about today. Uh, the beautiful part is that we are going to be presenting a Best of Bisco promotion uh, very shortly. It'll be in the depots and the dental um, distributors within the next uh, month to two months. And a lot of these products will be on, uh, on special and with some really great savings. And uh, actually, Dr. Morgan is going to be featured in one of those, art, uh, uh, one of those products. So um, 
keep an eye out for him. At least you'll see what he looks like. So, Maggie, uh, you have some questions now that we can uh, ask them if they're coming through? All right. The, well, one of the, okay, I can answer one of those que or ask one of those questions. Okay. Well, uh, this is from Elizabeth Caravino. Uh, Canavino, I believe. I'm sorry. Hopefully I'm not uh, saying it wrong. Why the Discover LV darkness, the composite after applying? So as the tooth get darker after? Yeah. Well, when the, when the Biscovers, when you first apply Biscover to a tooth, it does appear darker, appears a little more yellow, but usually we wait about 20 seconds, roughly. 20 seconds. Yeah, 20 seconds. And the, the material gets a little lighter. And, and then we light cure it. Um, one of the things we discussed, um, and one of the things doctors ask me a lot about is, when we put the Biscover on, should I be air thinning it out? And you absolutely should not be air thinning it out because what happens is you can apply the Biscover you know, with the brush that comes with the kit and a very thin layer, and then you wait about 20 seconds, and then you light cure it, and you have to you know, light cure it for... 40 seconds, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. I care for 40 seconds. And the material does get get lighter. If you place it in light cure right away, it can be a little bit darker, a little bit. And um, if you air thin it, you'll put ripples into it. Ask me how I know, because I've done it a bunch know? of times <laughs> and had to take it off. Um, I use Biscover a lot for my big, like full mouth restorative cases for the temporaries, because the temporaries look amazing after you put Biscover on them. But I've also air thinned it a few times, a little, you know, when I shouldn't be doing that. So, so to answer the question, if you wait the 20 seconds, the material gets a little lighter. If you fully cure it, it looks the color it should look. If you air thin it, you're going to get ripples in it, and you won't like it. Okay. So I hope that helps. I think that does. Here's a question from um, Sebastian. Uh, it says, "What about the color chart for reflections?" Okay. What about the color chart for reflections? Right. Um, well, we, we talked about that a little bit last time, and I don't have it on my flash drive here, but um, do you have the, you don't have the, do you have the yeah, chart? No, chart. that's good. Color chart for, for reflections, I mean, it's, it's simplified because it's supposed to be simplified, so you have, you know, basically light, medium, dark denton, you have neutral, frost, gray, gray. and gray. one other enamel, and I mean, the colors on the um, the tabs are pretty close. I mean, they're pretty accurate to the actual material in the mouth. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, in the posterior, I pretty much exclusively use the dark denton and then the neutral or the gray enamel. In the anterior, it's pretty much always the dark denton and neutral. Most of the time, gray, a little older patients, frost, a little younger patients. Um, I mean, the... I hope that helps, you know, what they were asking as far as the question goes. I think so. Okay. Uh, another question, come another question. I can always see my margin line. What can I do to better blend the composite into the tooth? Okay, that's an excellent question. Okay. Um, so margin lines, you know, can be caused by a couple things. One is, you know, there's, there's always stress-induced when you cure your composite, so you want to make sure that you've used you, know, you properly etched your if you're going to add, if you're going to total etch you properly etched your restoration and then applied the adhesive and then light cured that. Um, sometimes I see doctors taking you know applying the adhesive and then applying the composite or the restorative material and not separately etching or not excuse me not separately light curing the uh, adhesive and um, so that's one thing that can cause margins to show. The other thing is. One huge thing is if you overheat, so if you're finishing your composites and you're not using water and you overheat them, you actually degrade them and they'll, they'll be very extremely visible. It doesn't matter anterior or posterior. So you need to use a lot of water. You need to use a light touch. Um, if you burn them or degrade them, they'll show up. And if you bulk fill or you use too much composite in one area, um, that's where I showed using the, um, in the anterior, leaving the, the gingival and the, the mesial and distal areas open. Part of that also was, and I didn't mention it, was to keep um, keep from having so much shrinkage stress around the uh, the visible margins of the tooth. So if you separate those two out, like I showed, and you place them and then light cure them separately, 
you should have less visible or more invisible margins. Great. That's a great question. Great answer. Uh, another one from, oh, it's from Canada here, this one. Uh, with so many composites available, is there any feature that makes elite or reflection stand out from the competition? Okay. Good question. Mm -hmm. Hello to Chris. <laughs> yeah, Chris. <laughs> um, well, I mean, we'll start with, you know, we'll start with, with reflections. Reflections is a, is a really good, um, what I call like a workhorse composite, so you can you know, simplicity is a wonderful thing. So when you have, you know, you don't have a kind of an overwhelming number of choices, meaning you don't have 40 or 50 shades to pick from, it makes it a lot simpler for the doctor and, you know, in some states in the U.S. where the, even the assistants are placing composite, for them to, to choose the composite that's appropriate and place it. So I think with reflections, the big thing is simplicity. Um, if doctors are looking for something that's a little more aesthetic from um, you know from an optical property standpoint from a sh shade choice standpoint you know that's why I use elite more in the anterior because I want to do there there are times patients want simple and they want quick and so if you want to do two shades you could use reflections or use elite but most of the patients who come see me they want something that's really aesthetic and I want to take time so elite gives me the optical properties I want. It gives me physical properties. You know, I don't have issues with, you know, chipping and things like that. It gives me handling characteristics I want. I find it really easy to, to place and to manipulate. And you know, overall, the biggest thing for me is I get, you know, the aesthetic results that I want and that my patients want. And you know, I showed a couple cases here, and so, you know, the attendees can be the judges for themselves. But I think most of those cases would be considered acceptable or more than acceptable. So the advantages I would think would be how the material handles, um, how it, you know, how it looks when it's done and how the durability that I've seen over the years that I've used it. So those would be those would be the three things I would pick. Oh, that's good. Very good. Thank you. I think that answers that question. Yep. Okay, uh, another question, another one coming through again. It's, this one is uh, what is best to add tertiary anatomy for light reflections, carbide or diamond? The best, honest, the best way to add tertiary anatomy is actually with placing it in the composite before you light cure it. That's the best way to add tertiary. There aren't too many instruments you can use to cut that into a composite. Okay. Um, there are, I mean, a diamond you could use. You know, one thing I've done is we'll use um, like a really fine diamond. You can cut. Yeah, you can cut more secondary anatomy in there, and then you can soften it, because the diamond's going to cut straight. Remember, we talked about things in nature mm -hmm. aren't straight. So you can cut it with the diamond, and then you could add, um, you could use a little bit of flowable composite with some, um, you could use some, just the, the straight resin, like the porcelain bonding resin. You could place that over it, and what, do what I call soften it, meaning if you cut a line, it's going to be really harsh. It's going to look kind of fake, and you could use the resin and then a little bit of flowable to soften that up. Um, but the best way is just to do it before you put it in. Okay, that looks good too. Please. Are there any other questions that uh, we got coming through? Let's see. Another one coming through here. So when do you use all bond SE versus all bond three or total T. edge? Yeah, total edge. Yeah, T. Um, I if I have a lot of enamel, then I would prefer at this point I prefer to use total edge. And if I've got mostly dentin or in the posterior, I like SC. So most of these cases I showed in the anterior are going to be total edge cases. They're going to be all on 3 or TE. And then in, in the posterior, they're going to be SC cases. Mm -hmm. um, That's a good one. We did answer this one. And we have another one coming from uh, Russia, from Stan. Um, Stan asks, uh, what, what do you like uh, or dislike in Elite most? And which Bisco product is your is your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> That's a loaded question. That's okay. beautiful. Which Bisco? Thank you, Stan. <laughs> okay, let's see. What do you like? Just like most and least most. Um, the thing I'd like to see, uh, let's say, enhance and elite is a few more lighter colors, which we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I know that's that may be somewhat unique to the American market, and that people are somewhat a little crazy for light color right. teeth here. Right. 
So maybe you know we're looking to add in a little more light. Um, dislikes. Jeez, let's see. I know you. You know you'd have to ask my my assistant Ursula. I mean we. The products that I talk about in presentations and the products I teach and lecture about, they're the things we have around at the office all the time. And if I didn't like them, they wouldn't be around there. And the, the people from Bisco have been to my office know that I have a pretty limited amount of products in my office. I don't have tons of composite kits. I just have you know a couple things there. And so I, honestly, I don't really have any. I can't think of the top of my head any dislikes. Um, and which. Is Which is my favorite? Is your favorite? You're asking me to pick That's one. A good one. They're all good, right? I'm hold my feet to the fire on this <laughs> one. Yeah. No, um, okay. This is my favorite. Well, well, first of all, as I said at the beginning, I'm 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 a composite guy. I love composites. It's not that I don't use porcelain. We use a lot of it, but I, I really like composites. So, on one hand, I'd say elite because we use it so much. Mm -hmm. And then for my big restorative cases, we use a lot of we use a lot of Biscover. I use Biscover. To seal my posterior composites and my posterior onlays and posterior restorations, but we use it a lot in anterior cases for the provisionals I do because I do a lot of long-term temporization for um, complex cases, particularly implant cases. And these people, they want nice-looking provisionals. I spend a lot of time on them, and they want them to last, so they want them to stain and things like mm -hmm. that. And so Biscover is just—it's an amazing product to make to make temporaries look really, really natural. So. Sorry, I picked two. I know he asked me to pick one, but I picked two. Okay. That's okay. That's good. That's good. I'll take one. I appreciate that. Okay. Um, okay. Are we getting closer to the yellow? Do we got yeah, we one see. more question, I believe, coming through. Yeah. Do you prefer BISSEM or CoreFlow or dual, dual link, link for post and close? Right. Okay. Um, BISSEM, CoreFlow, or dual link. Uh, you can use all three of those for post and cores. Um, BISSEM would be the easiest to use. Um, CoreFlow. We've been using a, a lot of core flow lately <laughs> to build up teeth, um, you know, prior to me prepping them and also the place posting cores. Um, I do, do like dual link. You know, to be honest, I think what happens, at least in my office, is if we're just doing just a straight posting core and the, the rest of the tooth is pretty much intact, then I'm going to cement the, the posting core and you know, fill up the, the small area that's left with dual link. If we're building up the entire tooth, then I'd like, um, you know, kind of a homogeneous product, and so we can cement the post with core flow, and I can build up the tooth with core flow, and then we're good to go. So I would say, if I had to pick one, I'd say core flow. Okay, good. Okay, the, let's see, no more questions. It doesn't look like there's any more questions coming through. So I would like to, uh, on behalf of BISCO, I'd like to thank Dr. Morgan for attending this and, and actually presenting in such a fine fashion. And of course, the, the guest that we have here that's present with us today, as well as obviously our, our great customers around the world uh, visiting this webinar. Uh, Dr. Morgan is available for any lectures at all. Just go on his website again at smilesbymorgan.com. Thank you for attending, and we will see you again either next month or the month after that. Thank you.